Jesus, help. I need you, God. I need your words, God. Father, we thank you, we praise you. God, you know my heart. I, I don't just want to teach, God. I want you to touch people. So I pray that you breathe life, God, that you just release what you want to say, God. Jesus, thank you, God. True colors. So, uh, that's what I want here. So, something that's just been rocking me even more, it's it's funny how like the simple things, oh, like the simple oh. truths of the Bible can be endlessly profound. Like to where, like, it's all about Jesus. We hear that, but there's a deeper level where our hearts get surrendered even more and we get to know Him more, we see Him more. And and it's like, all of a sudden that, that it's all about Jesus becomes like a heart revelation that gar it, it's... It, it's mind blowing to me. Yeah, my nose. And then you try telling people like the most profound, impactful thing God's showing you, and it just sounds like simple, childish stuff. Yeah. Like, but the last couple of weeks, he's just been downloading just about hunger and like talking to me about like being hungry for the things of God. Like, that thing's huge. Like, um, but the other is the fact that we can actually find God, we can know Him personally. Where God's not, He's not distant, He's not far off. I know a lot of people have a concept of God, like He's up there in the clouds. And we, you know, if we pray loud enough, He might like hear us from heaven, like look at us. But the truth is, God's like right here, He's with us, He hasn't left us. He's Jesus says, I'll never leave you or forsake you, and He fills you with the Holy Spirit, which is God Himself living in you. Hey, He's in your heart, right? Yeah. Now check this out in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. God says, For I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. I love that because God, when He looks at you, He doesn't like, Oh no, I can't believe they messed up or I can't believe they missed it. But his, when He looks at you, His heart and His intention towards you says, Hey, there's a future there. There's a hope there. I have something more for you. I love this. This next part it says, Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when there's the when. I notice a lot of things in the Bible, a lot of the promises in the Bible have conditions in which these promises are fulfilled. You know, it says all things work out for the good of those who love God and those who are called according to His purpose. That passage does not say all things work out for the good, period. It says, those who love God, those who are called by Him. Like, there's this qualification, like, where our hearts are positioned to receive His promises. Here's, here's the qualification here. It says, you will seek me and find me when you search me for all your heart, with all your heart. So when we say, you know what, God, I'm sick of this life. I'm, I'm sick of the garbage I've been living in. And I'm laying this aside. And I'm going to search you with everything I have, everything I am. I'm going to lay my life aside. And I'm going to search after you. You will find Him. See, that's why Jesus said, deny yourself and follow me. There's that denying yourself that's really important. I want to sit closer, man. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really paying attention. <laughs> Check this passage out. Oh, wait a minute. I love you, man. I want to sit a little closer. <laughs> Check, Check I got to follow this guy. In 2 <laughs> Chronicles chapter 16, Verse 9, it says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. Wow. Their other translation says, Those whose hearts are fully his. Just like Jeremiah's passage, when we seek him with all our heart, it positions us for him to move in our life. It positions us where it's, it's the trade-off. It's your life for his life. It's saying, God, I want you, and he comes in. See, there's this place of surrender in God where we hear His voice, where we know Him intimately, where He speaks to us, where we recognize Him, we recognize His peace. And it's really hard to hear God's voice when we're carrying around a, a dead corpse of who we were before we knew Him. Yeah, exactly. Come on. Like, like it's amazing this whole, like, denying yourself. Because He says, you know, if you seek to save your life, you're going to lose it. 
but if you lose your life for my sake, you'll find it. What he's talking about is when we try to hold on to all these things and still keep God, we're in the most miserable place we could be in with God because we have just as enough of the world not to be happy with God and just enough of God not to be happy with the world. So now we're in this limbo of, oh no, like God, I want to go to you, but this stuff's in my hand. But there's this place where we lay it down and we open our heart and say, God, all right, I'm seeking you with all my heart. You will find him. Like, I remember God challenged me uh, about seven years ago. He, he, like, spoke to me. He said, what does it look like if everything you knew about this Bible you lived out? Because I used to be someone who I could quote the Bible in and out. I could preach to you. I could preach to you up and down. And, you know, like, but my life didn't match what I was reading. Like, my life did not line up with the, what, the God I believed in. So people would look at me and they'd see that. But God challenged me one night. He said, what does it look like if you went all in, if you gave everything to me, if you lived 100% after me? And first off, I didn't know that was possible. I had this thing in my mind that I was defected, I was broken, I'm always going to miss it. I'm <laughs> never going to be close to God, but as long as I try, I'm going to be okay. But that's, that's garbage. That's not the gospel. Because what the Bible actually says is that God will come in and help you. He'll come in right where you're at and overcome. Okay, I need to move my... A little, a little closer. <laughs> yeah. A little closer. So good, man. Okay. See. <laughs> now I'm all right. It's good to be hungry. Let's go to Romans chapter 8 real quick. I don't know if it's good to be hungry or not. Hungry hey, in the spirit, man. Can you find me a page? <laughs> can you find me a page? Now listen to this. <clears throat> I'm listening. It says, Therefore we are not debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. Meaning you know, owe nothing to your flesh. What that means is all the desires and the carnal mind and all this like stuff that keeps you prone to doing evil, you owe nothing to that and you don't have to fall in that. Man, that's pretty heavy. Dude. Like you're, you actually can be free from that. Like that's exactly what that's saying. Now listen to this, not by your own strength. Honestly, like when I was like hooked on all kinds of drugs and hooked on all kinds of stuff, you could tell me over and over to quit, but I did not have the grace of my life to quit. Even if I tried with all my strength, it took, it took God. God had to come in and do something, but here's the thing. It had me, I had to lay it down for him to come in to do something in me. But right here, I love this right here. It says, you're, you're not, we're not debtors to live according to the flesh, but if you live according to the flesh, you'll die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you'll live. So the Holy Spirit comes in and he actually empowers us to put to death the deeds of the body, the stuff we crave, the stuff. You know, and here's the thing, I want to address what the flesh actually is. A lot of people think, you know, I have this I wicked nature, this wicked thing inside me, and I'm always, it's almost like a duality where we're half good, half evil, and we're always going to be stuck in this battle until Jesus comes back. But if I have to wait to, for Jesus to come back to be free from sin, then Jesus isn't my savior, death is. Jesus came, he says, Jesus came to free sinners. It says, who the truth sun sets free is free indeed. If Amen. Jesus says he set me free, that means I am actually free. Now, here's the thing right here. If it says by the spirit, we put to death the deeds of the body, you'll live. Now, for as many are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. We need to be a child of God. Like what happens when you put your faith in him? This term called being born again. Holy Spirit comes in. He fills you with His Spirit. It said, you're joined with His Spirit. Now you share His Spirit. You share His nature. Well, what about this flesh thing? Well, here's the thing. When the Holy Spirit comes in, it says the Holy Spirit sanctifies you. That means makes you holy. Now, what is the flesh exactly? It's not this wicked thing inside you that you can never get rid of. What it is is you have a lifetime of thinking like the devil before you come to the Lord. You have a mindset that has been cultivated by the world, that's been cultivated by the enemy. It's been messed up. See, but here's the thing. When we come to the Lord, that's why it says, you know, check this passage out. It's in Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, brethren, that by the mercies of God, you set your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. What is that? Deny yourself, follow him. What is that? Laying down the old stuff and taking on the new. Now, when you do this, it says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of this thing. 
by the renewing of the mind. So the transformation actually comes from thinking differently, which actually the word repentance, if you look at the definition in the Greek, it means to change the way you think, to reconsider, to go one way, then turn to another way. It's a new mindset. What it's saying is, guess what? Your, your mind was cultivated by the enemy. You learn to think without God, but then when you come to the Lord, this thing's messed up, but he gives you a new this thing. It says he gives you a heart, you know, he'll take out your heart of stone. He'll give you a heart of flesh. He'll put his spirit in you and write his law in your heart. So have you guys noticed that when you come to the Lord, all of a sudden this thing called the conscience comes in. Yeah. And you're like, what is this thing? I remember like I would get spun out on meth and that was my peace. Like I'd be uh, hooked on drugs. That was my peace. I had no conviction of it except when I was off it. Then I had to run to drugs because that's what satisfied. But after I gave my life to the Lord, something changed in here. What happened is Holy Spirit came in my heart. He made this thing holy. So when I started falling in that stuff again, Holy Spirit's like, you're violating this. You're violating this. I made this holy and you're violating it. All of a sudden it starts you have this godly sorrow that leads to repentance. All of a sudden, those things no longer satisfy you. I remember, like, I used to drink, like, seven cases a night, like, in a party house, and I could not drink my need for Jesus away. The end of the night, I'm drunk, I'm plastered, but I still have this void inside that says, I need more than this. I, and it's funny, before I knew the Lord, that stuff would be my satisfaction. That would be everything. Now, the amazing thing, though, is here's the thing. God doesn't judge you in your brokenness. He doesn't come in and says, look at you, look at the mess you're in. Look, I can't believe this. Why don't you clean yourself up and come to me? He doesn't say that. He says, come as you are. I don't care how, how much damage you're in. I don't care what life you're living. I don't care how much sin you're under. It doesn't matter because I paid for that. You come to me and let me clean you. You come to me, let me help you. You come to me, I'm not gonna leave you in brokenness. Now it's amazing, the love of God, I believe is so clearly displayed on the cross. Because you have a God, like, worldly love looks like tolerance. It looks like yeah, exactly. accepting you as your brokenness. It's like, oh, that's fine. They're just messed up. There's this or that. And you, instead of accepting them in your brokenness, you accept them as your brokenness. That's just who they are. But the love of God is different because the love of God looks like God becoming a man, die, living a perfect life and dying on a cross. See, love looks like die, rather dying for you than leaving you in your brokenness. Love looks like, look, I'm not going to leave you on that. I'm going to come in. I'm going to lay down my life to bring you into holiness, to bring you into righteousness, to change you, to hold you, to, to bring you back into the love of God. That's what real love looks like. It's amazing because God like chased me down in some dark areas. And he never once said, I can't believe you're messing up here. I can't believe you're, how could you? Do? He, he always said, I have better for you. It's like God is seriously, when he comes to you, he's like, look, I got so much better for you. I have so much more peace than that could give you. I have so much love, so much peace. Everything you're looking for in drugs, I have better. I have a better kingdom. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is a hand. Change the way you think. I have something so much better for you. And I love that because what happens is he fills you with the spirit. He comes in right where you're at. He doesn't say change and then get clean clothes and then come to me. He says, you know what? I don't care where you're at. I'm going to come in. I'm going to love on you. And that's what you see in Jesus through the gospel. Jesus said, you see me, you've seen the Father. And Jesus, you see him going after, sitting with prostitutes and sinners and tax collectors where the Pharisees were freaking out. The Pharisees were like, how could you sit with those kind of people, Jesus? What's wrong with you? He's like, look, those who, those who are well don't need a physician, but those who are sick. He, I came to them. And it's amazing because I don't think people flocked around Jesus because he was judgmental. I don't think the drunks flocked around Jesus because he was sitting there like, I can't believe you're drinking alcohol in my presence. Don't you know who I am? I'm the son of God. You know? He could have, but you know what? He loved them to life. He loved them and he showed them there's something so much better. He carried something so much better. It's amazing, like, he, he picked fishermen to be his disciples. Like, I mean... Come on, that's like probably the worst sailor mouse, like the, the worst people you can find. He's like, hey, that, these guys are like drunks. These guys, these are my crowd. Come on, you're my disciples now. <laughs> like what? He's told, just follow me. You'll, you'll, it'll make sense later. <laughs> but that's who Jesus is. And here's the thing. I love that because he doesn't want the, we don't have to work for righteousness or right standing with God. He gives it to you. It's a free gift. 
It says, here, I want you to have this. It's called righteousness. When he died on the cross, he took on all your junk on himself so he could give you righteousness, peace, hope, joy, everything that you were denied in this life. He's like, look, I want to take your junk and I want to give you all this. That's amazing, but what? Wow. Jesus. And then he comes alongside you and he gives you not just righteousness, but grace. Well, what is grace? In the Greek, it means charis, which or harris, which means the divine influence on the heart and its expression throughout the life. It also means like divine favor, where God says, that's my kid, I love them, and giving you favor. But think of that one definition, though. What happens? God comes in, he changes this thing, and soon it starts expressing itself out here. See, real grace, is, grace is not mercy. See, mercy is you fall and it's okay. God has mercy. God has, you know, because I used to be one of those kind of Christians who I would excuse, you know, excuse my sin by, oh, God, God has grace. It's okay. I'm, I'm under grace. So I would sin and like just kind of take advantage of that. But true grace empowers you to not sin. True grace comes in and changes your heart. So it actually strips that desire out of you. True grace is Holy Spirit coming in and giving you power to do what you could not do. I love that because what it means is like I don't I don't get stuck in my brokenness and and here's the amazing thing about like God is Jesus isn't just the band-aid for your life he's not the band-aid to excuse your life where God's like it's okay I don't even see you anymore I see Jesus you keep being messed up now I look at you I see perfect because Jesus no that's not that's not the gospel Jesus didn't die for you he died as you When he died on the cross, that was your old man on the cross. And he said, look, I'm taking what, everything you deserve, but I'm taking on myself. Everything that separated you from God, I'm taking for myself. And guess what? Just like he rose again, he says, when you put your faith in me, I give you that resurrection life living inside you. I fill you with the Holy Spirit and I change you from the inside out. I love that. Like, it's amazing because I don't, I'm convinced that believe, if you're a Christian and you believe in Jesus, you you know, lost the right to call yourself a sinner. I, I'm not saying we don't mess up. I'm not saying we don't sin. But what I'm saying is that you are the temple of the most holy God. And that's like saying, like, can you imagine like calling your church the trash can? Would you, would you go around saying, oh, my church is a giant trash can? No, like that's not, that's not right, right? So why are you talking the, the holy temple where God himself lives? You're saying the nature of this temple is to sin. The nature of, no, he says he gives you a new nature. In Second Peter, he says, you become a partaker of a brand new nature. The issue, though, is you don't know who you are yet. The issue is when you give your life to the Lord, you become a new creation. Everything's new. Old things have passed away. All things become new. This thing still thinks like the old thing. This needs renewed. So what that means, you, man, you are holy, you're righteous, God's filled you, you're filled with Jesus, you just don't know what you have yet. He says, look, holiness lives inside you. God himself lives inside you. See, and when we sin, we mess up, and oh no, I messed up. Guess what? I believe in continual repentance. I believe that you need okay. to, if you're falling in sin, you need to turn from sin and serve the living God, because you, how could you have peace holding hands with the devil and God? Exactly. But... See, that's not who you are. You're not defined by your failures. You're not defined by where you messed up. And it says when you come to Christ, you have a brand new nature. I love that. Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we are. One more Christian life right there, bro. No, that was kind of off topic from what I wanted to talk on, but Jesus. <laughs> Obviously, it's not good. Good. No, like, <laughs> it's still good, dude. No, it's Jesus. Like, he's saved you both. Now, let's get back to this, like, knowing God. I think the most precious thing we could have in our life is a real, authentic relationship with God. Where our hearts are vulnerable to Him, where we know Him, where we wake up in the morning and we start encountering Him and seeing Him. Like, it's amazing. Like, we could actually find God. We could actually know God in a personal way. 
where I don't just know about God, I just don't just know Scripture, but I know Him. He speaks to me, and I love Him. He comes in and He touches me a lot of times with His presence where I'm like, oh, God just, like, He's here tangibly. And it's like, we need to be hungry for the things of heaven. We need to be hungry for Him. But He said, if you seek me with your whole heart, you'll find me. What exactly does that mean? That means when you stop trying to be someone you're not anymore because that person's dead and gone. It said, your old man's dead. You're a brand new creation in Christ. Who you were in the flesh doesn't exist anymore. It's crucified with Christ. You're a brand new creation created in true righteousness and holiness. That's what it says in Ephesians. But once we start embracing that, what what it's denying yourself and following Him. It's letting go of the junk and saying, God, I want everything you have. It's saying, you know what? I'm done carrying this corpse around. I'm going to lay it on the ground and I'm going to follow you, God. So much easier, too. It really easier. It's so much easier to walk in relationship than it is to try to, like, make your old man look like Jesus. It says your old man's dead in the Bible. You're a brand new creation. So when you're trying to, like, force your old man to look like Jesus, he kind of has a stench, you know? He's been dead a while. It's not going to happen. We can't dress up the old man look like Jesus. That's why he's like, just let him die. You're a brand new creation. It said you died and your life is hidden in Christ. It's hidden in Christ because we get to find him. And it's in that place of relationship where we actually find him. We actually know him. Jesus. I think this is a good slogan. I can see some of the bigness on Facebook. But I would, I would define religion as this. Religion is dressing your corpse up. <laughs> to look like Jesus. Like that I spoke to her from uh, G-O-S-P-E-L, God, our sins, and eternal life. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what you just said is just like trying to put perfume on a corpse as if something doesn't stink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I, here's the thing. Am I, and I want, I want to clarify some things. Like the passage that Psalm was going to read, it says, you know, as we behold as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, we're being transformed by the, into the same image from glory to glory. What that means is as we behold Christ, we become like Him. It's a process. I'm not, I'm not saying that I don't mess up sometimes. I'm not saying I don't miss it. But what I'm saying is that's not who I am, and God's called me to better. Amen. Any area I slip, it's not... Oh, that's just my nature. That's just me. I don't give myself excuses because Jesus didn't. Amen. No lies. I realize when when you when you're convinced you're a sinner, you sin by faith. Yes. When you are convinced that you are prone to sin, you will sin by faith. You'll, but here's here's the thing. What if you're convinced you're a child of God? What if you're convinced you're loved with Him? What if you're convinced that the, what the Bible says is actually true? That you're given a brand new nature. Then it, the way it says, as a man thinks, so he is in the book of uh, Proverbs. So that changes things because all of a sudden your thinking goes differently. It's almost like instead of being conformed, you being you start being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. Is this making sense? Yeah. Like this is, this is such a message close to my heart because what it means is freedom. What it means is, see, the devil has a lie where he, he put a lie in the church and put a lie in believers saying that he has a place there. And he doesn't. He's, that's a violation to who you are. See, the devil has a lie saying, this hook belongs there. It's always going to be there, but it doesn't have to be. So, like, my heart is for freedom. But check this out right here. I love this. It says, if you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is. It's sitting at the right hand of God. So when you know Christ, you just let go of the junk. Put your focus on Him. It says, oh, keep in perfect peace whose minds are fixed on Him. See, when we're, He becomes our focus and we just get hungry for the things of heaven, the hungry for Him. I love, you know, and here's the thing too, like, I'm starting to, I'm falling more and more in love with Him and not just what He does. Exactly. On the flip side, for those who come out with us and see miracles and like God starts moving and healing people and it's amazing, but here's the thing, that in itself is not going to satisfy you. You need Jesus. You need a relationship with Him. We need to know Him and be filled with Him because it's about Him. But here's the thing, when it's all about Him, then when you see Him move, you start celebrating and it's even more exciting because you know Him. It's like, Jesus! 
I love I love people getting healed. I love miracles. I love God moving. That's like such a joy, but it's not an end in itself. I don't like it for entertainment's sake. I like it because it shows who my God is. I like it because when someone gets healed, it's like God showing his love to that person. That's incredible. But it always points to him. But now check this out. I love this. Set your mind on things above, not things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden in, in Christ, with Christ in God. So who you were is gone, it's dead, doesn't exist. So you, who you are now is hidden in Christ. So you set your mind where he is. You set your mind on him and you start discovering who you are. Your life's hidden in him. He took your life and he gave you his. <laughs> is this making sense? It says... When Christ, who is your life, Christ, say that. Everybody, if you believe in Jesus, say, Christ is my life. Christ, Christ is, is my life. life. When Christ, who is your life, appears, you will appear with him in glory. Now, here's the amazing thing is we have this treasure in earth and vessels. What does that mean? God promises so much more, we have a portion of it. We're going to have brand new, awesome, glowy bodies. It's going to be amazing. It says that in the book. But here's the thing. Jesus is coming back. That's a real thing. He's going to come and he's going to set up his kingdom on this earth. And it's going to change everything. There's not going to be death. There's not going to be sickness. There's not going to be despair. And he invites us to partake in that kingdom now. To be the first fruits of that kingdom. Now, when, he, when Christ, who is our life, appears, we're going to appear with him in glory. But right now, we have that here in us. It's a relationship. Now, Jesus. It says, therefore, put to death your members who are on the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. And does God have wrath? Yeah. God, God is a righteous judge. He's righteous. Here's the thing. He owns everything. He created everything and everything belongs to him. So he has rights. You would consider a government that doesn't punish evil unjust. So how would God who created all things like he, he's just he's righteous. There is a day of wrath, but it says that he desires all to come to repentance. That's God's heart. That's God's nature. His heart is not to judge people in their sin, but to deliver them from it. But it says, in which you yourselves once walked but and lived among them. Now you yourselves are to put off all these things. How do we put off the deeds of the flesh? By the Spirit. So you get filled with Him. You set your, Right here it tells you, put your mind on things above. Put your mind where He's at. Get filled with Him. Start focusing with Him. And then all of a sudden you start finding the deeds of the flesh are getting easier. You start getting angry a lot less. You start, you know? says, now you yourselves put off all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out your mouth. Don't lie to one another since you have put off the old man and his deeds and put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. So, I love that. We're being renewed into the image of him who created us. Well, what happened in the beginning? We were created in God's image. Fall came in. That image got distorted. Jesus came. He's the image of God. We come into the kingdom, we come into Him, we believe in Jesus. And the Holy Spirit's out of work, forming us into the image of Christ. And right there it's saying, guess what? Take off the old and put on the new that is the image of God. Love that. It's funny because he's like the great leveling field. Like, you know, it doesn't matter what class you're in or what group you're in or what race you are or male, female. Like, it doesn't matter. You need Christ. It's Jesus. That's why it says right here, it says, There's neither Jew nor Greek nor circumcised nor uncircumcised nor barbarian nor Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. It's about him. Now here, this is, it says, therefore, 
as the elect of God, holy and beloved. I love that. Did you know you are the elect of God? You're holy and beloved. Where God looks at you and he sees you as holy. He sees you as, as, as his beloved. But right there it says, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing one another and forgiving one another. As, and if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. See, it's just, it's describing acts of love. You know, it's, these are the fruit of knowing God. You start falling in relationship with Him. You start knowing Him. You start setting your mind on things above. And this stuff starts just producing in your life. You notice these are the same things as the fruit of the Spirit. Now, how do we grow fruit? Water it. Water it, yeah. Set your mind on things above. You you feed it. You, you go after it. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Well, he's see? The only one that can teach you God, to understand the spiritual well, well, good soil and water, right? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Sunlight. And sometimes a little bit of that, that good food. So, uh, so it's, it's interesting how in the Bible, soil is a parable for the heart a lot of times. So what does that mean? You keep your heart clear of weeds. You take off the junk that will stop this seed from growing in you. you. You take out the junk that will stop it from growing and then you keep watering it. Relationship with God, intimacy with God, you spend time with Him. That could be praying, that could be reading your Bible. All these Christian disciplines are amazing, but if you don't connect to God through them, they, they don't do much. It's about connecting to Him and knowing Him. But when we know Him in that relationship, like, have you ever, like, can you, like, yell at a fruit tree and tell it to grow? Would that work? Hey, maybe by faith. Like, I, I have this blueberry tree that I've had, and the first year we had it, it, like, had awesome, like, their pink lemonade blueberries. But then it stopped, like, for, like, two years, I haven't seen blueberries on it. Like, me yelling at it, it's not going to, like, You're, you need to grow blueberries! Or, you know... A fruit tree doesn't have to try really hard to grow fruit. It's just right soil and continually water, and the fruit just comes. So here's the thing. Here's the key. Set your mind on things above. He'll keep on per you in perfect peace. His minds are fixed on him. Put to death the deeds of your members. Get rid of the weeds out of that garden. Don't allow weeds to grow there. And guess what? You have good soil. God's going to pour in it, and you're going to see it grow. And these, are th these become the heart's response rather than things you're trying to do. Love that. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule your hearts, to which you are also called in one body. And be thankful. I love how it ends with love, which is the bond of perfection. Because here, God is love, right? It says that in 1 John chapter 4, that God is love. If you don't love, you don't know God, because God is love. Right? So when we love each other, that's the purest expression of who God is. And he's saying, look, you're a partaker of my image. Who's God? He is love. So when we love each other, we're showing and we're, we're proving, we're releasing who God actually is. And everything really does come down to relationship. So I'm going to, there's this one passage that I've read probably over and over and over and over again. And I'll read again. It's uh, John 17:3. It says, For this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you've sent. So Jesus puts eternal life on knowing God. We need to really know Him. No. Knowing Him is relational. It's not something that we just... We, I read my devotional today, it's good, but it's living your life to know Him. It's seeking after Him. He says, you'll find me if you seek me with all your heart. Like, Jesus is not like a fast food thing, you know? Like, okay, I got my I got my Happy Meal today, we're good. Went through the drive-thru and I got my Jesus, we're good. And you don't have to think about him anymore. But it's, it's a life laid down and here's the thing, he's worth it. He is the only one worthy of you laying down your life. He's the only, like, who he actually is, when you know him, it changes everything. 
Because it's like he's the most beautiful, most wonderful, most incredible person we could ever get to know. And he fills us with love. And then we start realizing, wow, like everything my heart desires is found in him. Because he created your heart. He knows you. He, he made you in such a way where he's actually the fulfillment of all your heart's desires. Jesus. Huh? Same with no time it is. Uh, 9.13. 9.13? Okay. okay. Uh, are, you, are you guys okay? Could I go just a little bit longer? Or? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. So, do it. So, let's go back. I was talking about, about seven years ago. Like, I was uh, drinking a lot, and that was just my life. Like, I would, you know, wake up, drink, then play Call of Duty, and I was a Christian. I read my Bible. I read, you know, scriptures, and that's when God challenged me. He said, what does it look like to go after God 100%? You know, I actually took him up on that challenge. Then that night, like, I went to sleep and God gave me a dream. You know, God speaks in a lot, of, a lot of different ways. He'll speak through dreams. He'll speak through impressions. He'll put things on your heart. And all of a sudden, you'll just, like, know. You'll, you'll read the Bible and then you're, you'll start feeling something. You're like, wait, what is that? It's God speaking. He doesn't always speak with audible words, but he just, he speaks in a lot of different ways. So that night he gave me a dream and he showed me all these things in my life that were idols that I kind of held above him. What's an idol? Anything you hold above God. Anything that captivates your focus over God. Love you, uh, brother. What's up? Another day so, of paradise. So God showed me all these things in my life that were idols and all of a sudden in the dream it's like this has to go right now. And there's this urgency in my dream and I woke up in the morning and my wife was not on page yet. Like, she, you know, like all of a sudden she wakes up and we had like 300 horror movies and X, but like my Xbox is in a box and like I'm getting rid of everything. I'm like, I'm going 100% after God. <laughs> my wife's like, what is going on? <laughs> you know, she was really uh, lukewarm. She was lukewarm with me. So all of a sudden she sees this polar switch where it's like, what is going on with this guy? And then it's crazy because here's the thing. A lot of times, here's... You know, we give our lives to the Lord and we go after Him and we, we give our heart to Him. Where we finally get to the point where we're like laying everything down, but then trials come. And all of a sudden it's not as easy as it was. So I went through this period where all of a sudden everything came against me. Like I, I lost my position. I was a truck unloader and lost my position, got injured, got all kinds of stuff, started getting hit with depression, got all, all this crazy stuff started like storming around me at once right when I made the decision to give God everything. It's like, wait, where was God? But God put something on my heart. And I, he didn't audibly speak this or anything, but it was so burning on my heart and it had to be from him. And it was, if I endure through this, I will see his glory. See, if you seek me with your whole heart, you'll find me. That is a promise. If you want to find God, guess what? Allow your heart to be vulnerable and go after him. You'll find him. He promises that. Now, so I like laid that down and then all of a sudden, like, I remember I started going back to church because I, I, I been, was the kind of guy who like, you know, I've heard every sermon. So I go to church and be like the same boring sermon. I'm like, ah, I can't, I can't do that again. I'm done with self-help. So I was, I was staying away from churches. But then I started going back to church and then all of a sudden I had this encounter with God where I felt his presence in a tangible way. And it was kind of like the first time I got saved where I just got rocked. But he's just invaded me and then like I felt this fire fill my chest and then like had my first vision, got rocked. Like where it was like literally the most, one of the most intense moments I've ever had with God. And then after that, I heard him audibly speak. He said, I'm the Prince of Peace and I'm with you always. It was amazing because after that encounter, all of a sudden, everything that was pulling on, like the cravings, the, all this stuff just like left. And it, I was like hit with this presence, hit with this overwhelming sense of God's presence. And here's the point I'm trying to make is like when we give our heart to the Lord and we lay it down, he gives you grace to lay it down. When we go after him, and here's the thing, you can't clean yourself up. You don't. But when you lay yourself down, he comes in and he cleans you up. When you say, God, I'm going after you with all my heart, here's the thing, he draws your heart to him to be able to do that. That's why it says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it's him who works in us to will and do. So well, here's the thing, it starts with a heart commitment saying, God, I want to go all in, I want to follow after you. 
I don't care what the cost, God, I'm seeking you with all my heart. Then God comes in, he matches that with his grace to walk that out. And here's the thing, that's Jesus. Everything in the Christian life is supposed to be lived in his power, in his presence, in him. It's to know him, that's it, like simple. Like, and it's amazing because I, I've been living in this place of no condemnation, a place where my heart, like when I go to God, I don't have junk. You know, when we go to God and we have all these things, we start remembering that we did wrong and this and that, God dealt with that with me. Where when I go to God, I actually have a clear conscience where I could approach him and I instead, like I feel like he's my dad. Like I actually feel like he loves me. Like I know him. And it's amazing because that's an invitation to anyone who wants it. He says, look, it's a free gift. It's yours. It's called righteousness. Jesus. Oh, fighting, bro. Hmm? <laughs> the invitation, that's like fighting. Hmm. Uh, I got a little buzz. <laughs> hey, that's cool, man. I want to hear that. I want to hear the word. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> that's beautiful, man. Good, isn't it? Well, I do want to hear it. I... So, Jesus, I love, you, could, you could have as much of Jesus as you want, but it, it's not cheap. Like Jesus didn't die, like his death on the cross wasn't a cheap thing. It wasn't an easy thing. Like if you really think about what he did, what he endured, like, it, it wasn't cheap. It cost everything. It brought me to tears this morning. That's Someone was thinking about yeah. That's And here's the thing. Real. He was the it's only like person in history who could say he was completely innocent. Who could say, whose life testified that he was sinless. He was without sin. He never did anything wrong. And of all people on the earth, there was absolutely no case to judge him by. There's nothing to judge him by. Because he was God himself. He lived righteously. He was God in the flesh. And here's the thing. When he died for us, he said for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Meaning he looked at you and said, look, this is worth it. You're worth dying for. That's, that's God's heart. That's what God felt, man. He said that you're worth my life. You're worth my life on the cross to see you restored, to see you renewed. Now here's the thing. If... If his salvation wasn't cheap, why would we think receiving it is cheap? It's not just say a prayer, but it's giving your life to him. It's laying down your life and taking on his. I mean, you could have as much of God as you want. Do you want just a little bit, enough to get in, like, the gates? Or do you want enough to get heaven into you where it changes you? Right, and if it's not I want to feel it. For, huh? I want to feel it. You want to feel it. You want to experience it here in this life, right? Yeah. I mean, there is another life. Like we are, they, there is eternity. There's heaven, hell. That's real. But here's the thing: what's even, what's just as real is Christ living inside us, and knowing Him here and now. So if you if if you want that, if you want a deeper relationship with God, like pray with me, okay? Just so raise your hand. Like pray with me. Say Jesus. Jesus. We want to know you. We want to know you at any cost. So we lay down our lives to know you. Help us. Every area that, that blocks us from knowing you more. We ask for grace. In Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you. Holy Spirit, just come touch everybody here with a renewed passion, God. And a new grace, God, to relate to you, God. A new grace to see you, God. Jesus, I thank you, God. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, Holy Spirit. You guys gotta go. You can go too. Just wanna worship Jesus for a minute. Is that okay? Right. Okay. I really, really love him. I'm like, not going nowhere, brother. Mm -hmm. Okay, that.
that is... Is, is your guitar too? Exodus 33 where Moses would go in a tent and he would meet God face to face in his glory in his presence so when we're singing this position your heart in God I want to know you God I want to feel you I want to experience your love God
Fill us with your love Everything's easy When you're in love Everything's easy When you're in love Everything's easy When you're in love I'm so in love with you
He's on a high level. He's walking in the solid truth.